So Gene Robinson, yes, yes. Gene we Robinson's do here. love At least during going time. after pollsters. Yes, we especially do. Especially when we're so shocked. But you know, James Corville was on the show about a month ago, and mm -hmm. he said, listen, this race is not going to be one like four swing states to three swing states. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna all, exactly. It all flips it's gonna all one go way or the way. other. One's going to win seven. Mm -hmm. The other's going to lose seven. Yeah. And, and he goes, and it's going to be by the narrowest of margins. Well, if you look at the polls, you look at what James mm -hmm. said, that's look what we were saying here, that this race is a tie. That's exactly what happened. And that, that's what happened. That's, that push. That push went to Donald Trump at the end by a percentage point, one and a half percentage point in three states mm -hmm. that made all the difference. No, that's exactly what happened. Now, I, I happened to think it was going to happen the other way. Right. Right. I thought I thought that that it was going it was tipping toward Harris. And I would not have been surprised had she swept the, the swing states. Uh, but clearly that was wrong. It was the kind of night for which hotel Many bars were made, <laughs> um, but um, uh, yeah. but look, it's you know um, it, it's difficult for a lot of us to understand how uh, Donald Trump, given his record, given his incumbency, given everything he says and does, um, is uh, trusted and liked enough by enough Americans to make him president again, but. There we have it. I mean, and, and as you said, the polls had it a tie race. It's going to come out a point or two, um, but um, you know, in the in the not in the direction that I expected it to come. Yeah. So, at least we've been talking all morning that Donald Trump made gains almost everywhere over his margins in 2020. Likely going to sweep the battleground states. What's your morning after assessment of how he did it? You've got to hand it to the Trump campaign. They really ran a hell of a campaign, running up margins where they didn't previously. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the economy, the economy, the economy, inflation, it affects everyone's lives. You're paying double for food. Biden is unpopular, and she didn't separate from Joe Biden early enough, and she did it tepidly when the time came. And while that's honorable as a personal trait, she had to be more ruthless at the end of the day in separating because Biden is unpopular. I also think that there is just a cultural element of voting for Trump at this point, of voting against the condescending elites uh, that is supersedes everything. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, seen as them against us. Mm -hmm. He's our guy. Look at how they tried to get him. Look at how he always wins and he fights back. And he built a redemption narrative. And now... And, and, and by the way, Elise, you and I, I'm so glad you, you, you talked to that. We well, grew what? up with that in Mississippi. I lived in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Northwest Florida. It was like the elites were always against us. It was Hollywood always made fun of us. The news media was always biased. The, you know, the things that our kids saw on TV always outside the mainstream. You know, the counterculture always embraced by the elites who just didn't understand how we lived in the flyover states. That, that was the narrative for, for, for our entire lives that we heard, and I think you're exactly right. You know a whole lot of talking about a whole lot of things, but at the end, that narrative, which people have grown up with for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, it sticks. And that's why the anti-trans ads were so powerful, frankly, because it's not necessarily even about the trans issues. It is about schools and the issue of schools. And you look at, remember that Virginia governor's race where yeah. when Glenn Young can upset it and it wasn't about book bans as much as it was just the, people wanted to get their kids back in school. And right. when I think a national platform goes so local and hits into local issues that are hot buttons, you see how Trump is successful. But, but, but Willie, we need to talk about the trans ad. That Donald Trump ran 30,000 times. I think he spent $30 million on it, according to NPR. And, and they, I, you know, was Jack and I are watching football on, uh, on YouTube TV, and you can see four screens. That ad's popping up uh -huh. all fall. All, all fall. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, I'm asking people, you, you guys see what's going on here, right? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Nah, that's nothing. It's not showing up. Mm. It's not showing up. Well, why, why did the Trump this? people do it 30,000 times? Because, guys, 
in rural America, guys across the Midwest, guys, younger guys who are Hispanic, younger guys who are black guys. They're all looking at that going, OK, man, she's weird. And as Bill, as Bill Maher said, it's like she's like really too liberal. And Bill Maher said, you know, that ad out there is basically saying there's nothing that the left will not mm. say no to. Of course, we know the end of the story. Rick Wilson came on and it ends up. But that was Donald Trump's policy. That was his Justice Department policy. But nobody saw that ad. Nobody saw that ad uh -huh. because Rick Wilson tried to get that ad uh, played. And all of the PAC groups, all the different oh, no, no, that ad's not having an impact. I'm telling you, that ad had a bigger impact than any ad that ran. And that's why they ran it 30,000 times. Sure. Guys were watching it over and over again going, Phew. well, I think you told me a member of your family. Sure. Was like, whoa, that's weird. And the power was that it was in her own words. Mm -hmm. They couldn't right. run from that. She her was on camera saying that, despite the fact, as we pointed out many times, that this was a Trump era policy. But it got to a larger point, which was, I think a lot of voters didn't buy her swing to the middle. They believed she was who she said she was in 2019 when she ran for president. And when she was confronted with all that about the police and this stuff about um, trans surgeries and prisons and all that, I think a lot of people thought that's her. She swung to the center to win a general election, but we're not buying it. And I, I will tell you, I live in a relatively rural area outside the city. There was a local race there. Uh, and the Republican changed her signs, picking up on this, and every sign said, save girls sports. It was just her name yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she said, if you read and, and talk to people around the campaign, she couldn't print enough of those signs. People were driving by <laughs> saying, I want one of those for my yard. When it was just her name, they said, oh, it's another candidate. I don't even right. know who she is or what she's <laughs> running for. Save girls sports. And they were all over the place. Well, Matt, uh, the Washington Post, Matt By writes in part, I do think the prosecutions fed a narrative of Trump as a victim. I also think Democrats dug themselves into a hole on cultural issues and identity politics. Trump's vicious transgender ad in the closing weeks, she's for they, them, he's for you, was probably the most effective of the cycle. I think that probably landed with a lot of traditionally Democratic voters who feel like the party is consumed with the cultural issues, while the economic issues don't really change. I think people needed a reason to feel good and hopeful about voting for her. And absent that, a lot of frustrated voters apparently decided to go with the guy who wants to burn it all down. Let's dig a little deeper because you have that <clears throat> stacked on top of what happened on college campuses this fall, stacked on top of what's been happening on college campuses over the past four or five years. I have said this on the air. And every time I've said it, people said, oh, you're just saying that because you're a white conservative. No, I'm just saying it because every Democrat that we have ever sat down with dinner uh, with over the past five years who have kids that go to colleges say their kids are afraid to speak in class because they'll be canceled. Let me say that again. And, and they're all Democrats. Everybody that we've had dinner with, if they have a kid in college, you go, oh, the Red Sox going. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Sitting there eating. Oh, you know, beautiful day today, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, my daughter at University of Virginia, she's afraid to raise her hand in class because if she says something that's politically incorrect, she will immediately be canceled. She'll be shunned from class. She'll be destroyed in social media by noon. So they just sit in class quiet. Now, if any of you, which camera? Give me a camera to look at. <laughs> Boom, I'll look at that one. If any of you out there say, oh, that's just like a, a conservative, white, southern guy, da da da, that's what you're losing. That's what you're losing. Because that's what I heard. And I didn't hear it from Republicans. I didn't hear it from Trumpers. I heard it from Democrats over the past three or four years. Their kids were afraid to talk in class and say something unpopular because they would be canceled. And it's an epidemic. Willie will tell you it happens in New York City schools. It happens in colleges. And all of this adds up to people going, come on, come on. This is crazy. And, Mike, it's having an impact from, again, the trans ad to, uh, yeah, the athletics. And by the way, by the way, as we've said on the show a thousand times, 
Democrats should be smarter on the women's athletics thing. 85% of Americans oppose men transitioning after puberty and competing against women. And I'm not just saying this the day after the election. I've been saying this for years. This is not a hard call. You can show compassion and you can show grace. And as the Republican governor of Utah said, let's figure out a way to do this. But one way we don't do this is by allowing men who transition after puberty competing against young girls who have been working their entire lives to be as good as they can be, and then they get destroyed in the pool, on the track, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take a couple. <laughs> yeah. The husband is a firefighter. The wife is a, is a nurse and an emergency room nurse. They have three kids. One is college age. The other two are in high school. The two kids who were in high school and the kid in college <clears throat> lost a lot of the school year in 2000, in 2021, <clears throat> after COVID. They were kept home. Parents didn't know why. In they fact, he didn't get to play his senior year of football. Been they, playing it since seventh missed, grade. They missed proms. They missed friendships. They missed socialization. They missed so much. They missed it all in terms of high school. Okay, so they've moved on in their lives. The Democratic Party doesn't realize what they don't hear, what they don't talk to. So these kids all went to schools where they came home. And one of them got in trouble because he didn't use they or them or whatever pronoun was needed to be used in, a, in an eighth grade classroom. He got shunned because of it. The, the, other, the other kid came home one day and she was in trouble because of the same thing, because of language and because she complained about, about the guy who was playing on her school softball team and the girls softball team. All right. So the parents are so frustrated they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And they have one particular party the Democratic Party and a small clique of the Democrats who call themselves progressive have spent the last decade hectoring those people. Tell them, no, yeah. you have to say they. No, you have to do this. You have to live this way. There are a lot of transgender people. We must respect them. No one wants to harm transgenders. But how many of them are there? Yep. Seriously. So <clears throat> this is a significant part, but not all of what happened. I mean, we can't avoid yeah, exactly. what Donald Trump brought to the table and what Americans voted for. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he brought to the table was clear and present mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and vulgar and threatening. And he won. And, and because of all of what you just said, Mika, yeah. a lot of people who formally voted for the Democrat heard him, watched him, listened to him, and said, boy, he's tough enough to beat down those people. Right. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. care what they And by the way, people are listening. Again, we're talking about a lot of different issues. We're not talking about the transgender issue. And as I said before, there's a compassionate way to do yes. two oh, things no, no, at I once. I totally agree. Uh, but sa this same the same thing with like uh, college. And if you had a fourth child there who was going to a school, a college, that basically got shut down by people burning American flags, and 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 and, and trafficking anti-Semitism, that would be your that would be a, a grand slam uh, for on on those political correct issues that I promise matters and not just to white Understood. people. Look at the polls; it matters to people of color as well. Come